suppose the most of you are lucky enough not to know much about orthopedic surgery. Um, I'm going to talk, um, reveal some of that to you today. I haven't been that lucky. Um, for me, it started when I was only seven. I was diagnosed with scoliosis, um, which is like a curved spine. And I spent some time in orthopedic clinics watching um, in slight horror. Uh, patients being treated with different instruments and, and mechanisms. And um, for me, the treatment was uh, wearing a full torso braces for one year. And um, it's, it's kind of tricky when you're seven and trying to run around, but it went OK. So with these memories, um, it's probably not surprising that uh, one visit at orthopedics clinic in Bristol prompted me to start uh, research in this area. So I have been doing robotics for quite some time now, and if you put these two together, you can probably guess that I'm going to talk about surgical robots for orthopedic surgery. Um, so what orthopedic surgeons do um, is, is quite amazing. They take uh, small pieces of, of, of our bones and they put us together like, um, like a jigsaw puzzle. I found that inspiring, I found that interesting, and um, you know, talking to surgeons, I visited um, operations, I looked at what they are doing, and I really wanted to understand the complexity of this. Um, so bone fractures are painful, they have to be treated uh, quickly, they have to be treated accurately. Um, and in this, um, uh, so probably uh, you know at least one person who has experienced the fracture in life, and the, but there are tens of thousands of fractures in UK per year. In this massive pool of fractures, uh, we have on one side people who enjoy extreme sports, uh, we have people who fall from motorbikes or just um, are unfortunate enough to, to be part of a car accident. But on the other side of this pool um, are um, the fractures that stem from the fact that our bones uh, get brittle as we get old, and the, the, the fractures from fragility are particularly on the rise um, in, in not only in UK, but as the, as the population is getting older, the number of fractures uh, for this reason are um, actually rising. So to talk about the surgical robots, I'll talk uh, uh, more about the fractures. Um, and uh, to understand where the orthopedic surgery is today um, and where it will hopefully be in the near future, um, we have to understand where uh, surgical instruments are and what the surgical um, operation is. So orthopedic surgery is well known for being a bit brutal. So you can just imagine a surgical trolley which is littered with various saws, um, uh, hammers and drills. And imagine a, an orthopedic uh, surgeon who is waving a large drill around the patient and saying things like just one more drilling and it will be fine. And it all looks pretty horrific. So some, some um, of the treatments that are used today in orthopedic surgery, surgeries are well known from ancient times. So bandages um, to immobilize the fracture and, and splints have been used also in ancient Greek times. And, and you can see here Achilles fixing up the upper arm of his friend and, and uh, two, these two guys trying to fix the dislocated jaw. So some of these mechanisms are still in use today. Um, and uh, many, many wars later, and many centuries later, uh, in Napoleonic Wars, we still have the same, uh, same things were used, only with the invention of gunpowder, the fractures and the injuries became uh, more severe, and bandages and, and, and splints couldn't help anymore. But at that time, so the infections, amputations, um, and prem caused prom premature deaths, um, and surgeons really were really challenged to come up with something better uh, than they had for centuries. Um, so the fracture surgery as such, so that the surgeons are now going inside the fracture, trying to align it, trying to fix it, um, really started in uh, towards the end of the 18th century. But it wasn't before some of the, the big uh, breakthroughs in surgery, which also made a breakthrough for other types of surgeries as anesthesia, an opportunity to actually keep patients asleep for long, uh, that, the, that the surgery could really be uh, uh, taken seriously. 
uh, for orthopedic surgery. Um, so here we have um, a, a, a representation of the first public demonstration of using ether to non-patient during the surgery. Um, another breakthrough for orthopedic surgery was oh, invention of x-rays. So at this point, the surgeons could see inside the patient, they could see the fracture, and they could also put the patient asleep uh, for longer. So how are the fractures treated today? So we have these two inventions. This takes us to the 19th century and what happened since then. So basically, what the surgeon does is um, more or less um, option that other surgeries have. So the surgeon will have an option of taking large incision into the patient, into the patient limb. Um, this has advantage because it's a very good visualization. The surgeon can see what he or she is doing. Uh, but this leaves the patient with large scars, um, a long recovery, um, a high possibility of infection, and basically um, large stay, long stay in hospital. One um, alternative way is to use minimally invasive surgery. So to use small incisions and try to insert the instrument and, and manipulate them um, through these very small holes. And in many other areas, surgery is going to in, in this direction. So the idea is that the patient outcome has to be better. The, the, the patient has to recover faster. Uh, and the only way to do that is to try and to re reduce incisions. In the case of orthopedic surgery, this is all fine. The only problem is now that the visibility is not that good. Um, so they would like to go this way. Uh, the only vision they have is a two-dimensional x-ray. So if you think about what they are trying to do, it's not easy. So they are moving three-dimensional objects inside the closed body, the closed box of our bodies, in order to try to get them into the right position. It's not easy. They don't always get it right, and therefore they can't always use minimally invasive surgery in order to, to uh, successfully uh, put the fracture two back together. So what they have in front of them, so they have C-arm, so this is basically a mobile x-ray. The mobile x-ray can go around, it can rotate around the patient, it can take the x-ray uh, or the image from any direction, it will be a two-dimensional image. This serves them as an as a intermittent, um, so it's not a continuous um, uh, input, visual input of what they are doing. What they can see with this are the bones, and they can also see the implants. So how they fixate this, so they, put the, the, they try to put the, the bones back together, they put screws and plates, and they try to keep it all stable. So this is what they have in front of them. So more or less, we are talking about these inventions that already happened 100 years ago. So what happens if they don't put this correctly? Well, it is tricky. Um, so the costs are even higher for the, for the health system, but it's also possible second operation, arthritis, uh, post-operative pain, and, well, basically nothing really good. So... What are we doing at Bristol Robotics Lab? So I came from the same place as John, Jonathan and doing just in a, in a different group um, the, this research. So what we would like to, to provide to surgeons is first of all good vision. And to do that, we need to show them the whole picture. We need to give them a three-dimensional view of the surgical field. So what we are using is um, we use it, their CT data, so this gives us a 3D image. We use the software, we could create 3D models, um, and instead of using ionizing radiation, we use optical trackers to follow the instruments during the operation. So now, what we want to do is to replace the surgeon's hands um, with the robots, and we want to, to keep the surgeon at the place where the surgeon is doing the best. And this is pre-planning of the surgery and putting the anatomically the fracture back together. So what we, uh, what we designed is a robotic system. So it's not a one robot, it's not two robots, it's several robots. Um, each of this, the whole system replaces two to three surgeons that will have to be involved in a, in a type of surgery like knee fracture. So each of these systems, so we have here 
one manipulator, we have here a second manipulator, we have a third manipulator, will do what the surgeon team, surgical team will do in the operating theater. So in the, um, in the pre-planning stage, what we have is are the 3D models, so the 3D objects of the, of the fragments, and we have a surgeon who hands-free can manipulate these objects on the screen and do what we call virtual reduction, meaning that now everything is in the right place. So the, the, the researcher here who is demonstrating this is using a small sensor here, which you can't see because it's all black over there. It's called lip motion. And it is like a small, very small Kinect. What he has is it just follows the motion of his hands and he can grab, so he's using, um, he's using uh, Unity software, he's moving these objects on the screen and he is using the foot pedals in order to change the view of the camera. So this is deliberately made hands-free so that the surgeon doesn't have to touch anything during the operation or just before the operation. So this is a pre-planning stage in the next, uh, next is uh, now simulation of, um, of the robotic system that was developed. So we have designed a system that has many degrees of freedom so in order to cover the whole surgical field. So how the operation starts is, this, is that the surgeon puts uh, small pins inside, so it drills them in the, s in the, in the fragments, and the, robots, the robot, the small robot here at the top, is grabbing the pin and it can manipulate the pin um, in, in, the, in the right anatomic position. So um, uh, this, this platform that carries the small robot has four degrees of freedom. The small robot here at the top has six degrees of freedom so it can fully replace the surgeon's hand. So all the tests we've done currently in, in, in Bristol, at Bristol Robotics Laboratory in preparation for further study on um, um, on cadaver stud, on human cadavers. Um, now it's the, the full view. So uh, this is what the surgeon uh, will see from, from up close and will make sure that from any direction the, the fracture has been uh, put together um, in a proper way. So there, uh, the, the problem they have is that if they see it from one plane and they think it's correct, that from another plane it, it doesn't have to be correct. So they really need to see that from every single direction. Once the, the surgeon is happy that the fragments are together, uh, basically the path of every fragment is recorded and this, uh, this motion is then transferred into the robot. So now it goes into the physical reduction uh, where the robot takes over, picks up the path for every fragment and, and puts it back together. So the system, as such, is, is currently under development in the lab. It has been funded by National Institute for Health Research and it has a big team of researchers behind. Um, it has its limitations and we are, of course, aware of that. Um, but we think that this is a, a stepping stone to different ways how the fracture surgery can be done. And we have to, to, to think about where we are at the moment, um, in, in where is the problem that we are trying to solve. So currently in UK there are about 70,000 only hip fractures per year. This costs NHS about 2 billion pounds per year and that is over 1 billion in hospital costs and 1 billion on post-care, uh, post-surgery uh, costs. So this is huge for, for uh, the health system. It is projected that this number of, of surgery will increase to 100,000 and uh, the cost will, associated <coughs> cost will follow that. So this is a problem that has to be solved. It will not go away. Um, and if we can make them do things accurately, at least we could save a lot on the hospital costs just after the surgery, but also reduce the number of second surgeries and, and post-surgical complications. So we are working towards um, smaller robots. We are working towards better visualization. Every surgeon will say, oh, well, I actually want to see soft tissue around. So we are building a more, um, uh, a better models, uh, more lifelike models for them in order to understand uh, what they are doing when they are moving, moving uh, fragments on the screen. So this is where we are and, and one day when one of us has to face that hip surgery, 
uh, we could be glad that the surgeon there, so that it wouldn't matter how junior or how senior the surgeon is, we will have something that will be able to assist them to do things accurately and it won't matter if it's a weekday or a weekend, we'll be in the safer hands. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.